your fighter. Collective missions uh, is very simple. We want to promote visual storytelling and amplify voices through the lens of women. As a female photographer from Myanmar, what I would like to say is that it's not uh, easy. It's uh, it's not just Myanmar, but it's for globally. Um, photography is a uh, man's wall. So, um, in my very first beginning of my career, I try to walk alone, but it's um, it's not that easy, uh, especially with the accessibility to um, jobs and uh, and even with the mentorship. Uh, I didn't know what was mentorship uh, in the early uh, uh, you know the beginning of my career. The female photographers, not as in Myanmar, you know, in also other countries, they face uh, many predicate problems that might also include discrimination. And also uh, in countries like Myanmar, uh, they are not allowed to enter uh, some related spaces or, you know, those limitations. So there are many uh, predicate problems uh, to be a female photographer. I never really identify myself as a female, female photographer. Um, I only think of myself as a photographer. Uh, it doesn't mean that uh, my gender identity is not a woman. I still identify myself as a woman. It's only that uh, I prefer to call myself a photographer instead of female photographers. Young girls, we did not grow up knowing that being a photographer is a career option for us. Uh, we did not have many female photographers around in, in our environment uh, when we were young. Female photographers, uh, they have that pressure to conform into uh, the community that we already uh, have. Uh, in our industry here, um, uh, they they need to prove uh, thumbs up. They need to prove that they are as good as many other male photographers, and um, uh, they uh, they also sometimes uh, either consciously or unconsciously need uh, the approval from other male photographers. If people question. Um, female photographers uh, work when they are recognized by, by organizations or the, the photography institutions. Uh, are they really good or is it, uh, is it a gender, uh, gender coder or diversity coder? Personally, uh, I don't care. Uh, we don't have to prove that we don't we don't have to prove that we are actually good or we don't have to prove that oh it's not because we are uh, being women our work i think our work will prove themselves uh, for this kind of journey
for me, uh, uh, the most uh, barriers I have to overcome um, uh, that uh, do uh, uh, keep uh, focused on my uh, immediate and important uh, uh, responses uh, and uh, to uh, 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 overcome uh, uh, my own self-censorship uh, embedded by uh, uh, traditionally uh, patriarchy society. Start working as a photographer, and I start work uh, uh, and I work for the newspaper back in 2013. There were only two women journalists in Myanmar at that time, and but now in Myanmar there are more newspaper hiring uh, women photographer and more projects mm -hmm. involved with women photographer. That's a good thing, but still, and I feel like our works were being looked at judged by the stereotypical view. For example, like in the newsroom, most of the photographer, uh, women photographer were asked to cover women related issues, like women giving birth, um, going to the nannery, uh, nannery school, or cover the soft news, while men are covering the war, uh, the war zone, or protests. This, this still still happening, um, not only in the local perspective, but also when we deal with the international in the international perspective too. Uh, when we deal with the international curator, the festival, um, the frustration for us is like the frustration for the women's women photographer is um, sometimes uh, we got some feedback like. Oh, your your box doesn't have Burmese look, Burmese aesthetic. So what do you mean? And so being, and I think um, they look at our work with one dimension from the region. So, um, so it's quite frustrating for for that part too. And also like uh, your work doesn't. Another comment: your work doesn't have woman related issue. So what do you mean? But at the same time, uh, those limitations makes us unique if we work on what we believe. Um, and if we don't have platform, create a platform by ourselves. This is how Duma Collective started. I say boo. Boo. Things get mad when I mash up the room. was founded in 2017. Uh, in 2017, there was a photography workshop organized uh, at Myanmar Data. Um, after this workshop, uh, during the workshop, there are like uh, eight participants, uh, and you, you, what she was the teacher's assistant. Uh, after the workshop, we uh, wanted to keep. Uh, we wanted to keep meeting up and talk talk about photography. Uh, so uh, we decided to meet up regularly uh, to share our uh, to share our common challenges with photography. Uh, and then uh, after a couple of meetups, we decided to form a, a collective uh, to deliver stories. Through the to, through the platform, uh, one of the purposes of the collective was to to keep inspiring each other. Among our members, uh, we learn from each other and we give credit to each other. So that helps a lot. Uh, it's not always, you know, uh, uh, how can I say? Uh, it's not always nice, you know. Sometimes we give each other uh, really harsh critics, and maybe you know we. Uh, might not like it uh, in the beginning, but you know later, uh, you know that was uh, that was a really good thing. So I think being in the collective really pushed me uh, to trying really hard. 
meeting with uh, fellow photographers in the industry is uh, very important uh, for us. Uh, uh, that's why uh, we uh, also uh, try to organize uh, photography uh, trainings uh, and uh, visual story uh, telling trainings uh, to uh, women organizations, uh, youth organizations, and uh, uh, activist organizations. Sharing knowledge is very important uh, in our community, especially in this uh, country with little exposure. Uh, we organize workshops for local NGOs. Uh, through this kind of workshops, we share photography with many other women, uh, especially young girls, uh, to, to use photography as a tool to articulate their own stories in their own way. Looking like I mashed up the roof, mash up recordings, mash up the booth, mash up the stage, mash up a zoo, mash up in the venue, mash up on route, mash up the headlines, mash up the news, mash up the tech line, mash up the news. In regards of the photography scene in Myanmar, historically, uh, Myanmar has enriched uh, photography uh, culture. We could learn uh, that Myanmar has enriched uh, photography culture through the projects like uh, Myanmar uh, Photography Archive. And we don't have uh, any uh, photography museums yet. Some uh, museums like uh, National Museum uh, curate uh, uh, some shows uh, apart from their permanent collections. Photography is hardly uh, a feature. In terms of uh, uh, funding, uh, those uh, uh, who worked on hardcore uh, documentary and NGO style reporting are more uh, prospective. Uh, there is a no uh, art funding stream in Myanmar, but uh, compared to the past, I would say uh, uh, things are um, uh, uh, progressive. Uh, there are in this year uh, some uh, fundings uh, supported by organizations like uh, uh, Gotha Institute and um, Institute of uh, uh, Frances. Uh, we don't have um, any uh, 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 photography institutions. Um, like uh, having uh, photography as a um, main subject uh, in the university. Uh, we have a national art and culture university uh, where filming, film is uh, one of the main subject and uh, photography is uh, 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 part of the program as a minor subject. And uh, again, at the uh, National Management College, uh, we can take uh, journalism as the uh, main uh, uh, major. And again, uh, photography is uh, a minor subject uh, as part of the uh, program. Photography is not listed as art in Myanmar. Um, so in the University of Art, there is no photography as a main course and there is no photography class in the journalism things like that and also we don't have photo museum and we can also count the galleries which showcase photography work most of the gallery in Myanmar showcase the sculptures painting things like that um, so photographer from Myanmar has uh, fewer opportunities to learn directly from the museum from the seminar and from the talk than other the the photographer from other countries like Switzerland, Germany, or different uh, the other parts of the country, and so we think that photography education is really important this moment, and that's why uh, Nima Data and Duma Collective we started a collaborative project, um, educate photography education. We we cannot start like a proper university or proper pro proper school uh, proper institution, but we. We try to introduce with a seven month photography program uh, by inviting the international experts. Um, for now, uh, I think from earlier parts of the education program, like maybe one or two or three years, we will bring the international um, experts 
but we try to substitute with the local photographer who got those education in the future. Uh, we don't have uh, uh, met uh, spaces uh, to showcase uh, our works uh, inside the gantry. We always uh, try to uh, seek uh, opportunities internationally, uh, internationally uh, where we can uh, showcase uh, uh, from our uh, portfolio to being a part of uh, 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 exhibitions or festivals or other important uh, platforms. In our Instagram, you will see we often upload the photos in a set of themes. Recently, we have this um, uh, like a set of uh, self-portraits uh, for each uh, member of our collective and then we have um, uploaded it uh, on Instagram and we use our Facebook to upload uh, and share about uh, photography related articles or information or and, and often our photos. So um, we take turns uh, and, and we take over our Instagram account and, and Facebook account. We, one of the collective activity is introducing photobook culture in Myanmar uh, because as our, co uh, our collective uh, love photobooks as an art object because we can express our artistic expression into the another art object with the photobook. And another thing is like as you as I already told you there are limitation there are uh, fewer gallery we can show our works and so photobook can be the mobile, gallery to different parts of the country that can travel very easily. And another part is the uh, political situation in Myanmar. Back in the olden days, the books are more restricted and more censored. But now the government more focus on how and what you post on the internet. We have like a crazy telecommunication law. You can be sued on your the post if you post about something sensitive with the government. Some artworks, uh, sensitive artworks online uh, against with the government, uh, you can be sued with the telecommunication law. So um, now people, the government less give, give less uh, oppression, uh, oppression, oppression to the books. So we can, uh, we can bring books to different parts of the country, like uh, Rohingya Gam in Rakhine or to Bangladesh, we can travel, we can bring our artwork to different parts of the country. So it's another advantage of uh, making for the book. But I'm here right now, right now, just getting in a cloud. Oh, wow, I'm here right now, right now with you. Oh, wow, oh, wow. Body and soul, it's about uh, transgender people. Uh, and, the, and especially to uh, to uh, trans uh, one's trans woman and one's trans man. So in the beginning, I was set to do the ongoing project. You know, like I wanted to show um, what was before their surgery and what was after the surgery, and all those ideas were in the back of my head. Back, uh, but it's actually. Once I started doing that, and as I get to know them and uh, learn about the process that they need to take and how much it charges, it, um, it was, uh, I learned that it was almost impossible for them. So, I, I, uh, actually, I did a portrait series uh, of trans women. Uh, before this project, so I I uh, I knew Lolo. Uh, Lolo is the one on the red sheet. Uh, I knew her before, and uh, my and, and then the one on the uh, blue uh, sheet, bed sheet, it's my cousin. So actually, he's the one that uh, that was the force, you know, like that. Um, uh, that drove me doing this um, project.
in Myanmar, even the um, uh, the surgery is uh, illegal. So the, the and also the hormone taking is uh, you know like it's not or, or legally allowed. So they have to get the hormones. Uh, they are the imported ones, and then they sometimes they come. Most of the time, they come from Thailand or China, and then uh, often they can get uh, the you know the counterfeit ones, and it's it's uh, dangerous, and it's uh, you know they need to pay at least like uh, ten dollar or something often, but they are. Uh, they couldn't afford it, you know. The society is structured in a way to push down or the people that are not living to that standard of our society. So they are discriminated from the very beginning, you know. Like uh, the at school, they they are discriminated for not wearing the right uniform. So. From then, they are traumatized. And my cousin uh, told me about his dream about being, you know, um, have a surgery and become a man. And then he he says he, then he he won't be discriminated anymore. And then he 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 cry and he talked told me about all these discrimination he faced in his job. And look, 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 it's, um, she walk as, um, uh, the beauty, beauty, beauty shin. That's what it's set for trans woman in Myanmar. Either that or the spirit medium, you know, the dance, dan and the dance and entertainment feel. I was thinking about this, the ending result of becoming a man or woman, but it's not easy. So, what I want to show in my story is about what they are uh, doing, what they can to express themselves as a man and woman. You know, the, with the tattoos and their gestures, they, the, all these little details in the way they w are expressing themselves as they want to be recognized. Displaying my walk, I didn't have um many difficulties with that i think it's also because um around that time the uh, nema has started to become open up and uh, we were on our way to democracy and uh, we also have uh, uh more uh, you know, civil society organizations and NGOs, local NGOs that are working on LGBTQ rights. So it's um, it's changing, and then they, the 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 uh, um, the uh, the CSO they even got to do the LGBT and uh, Yangon Pride event out in the open. You know, like with. So that kind of process was there. So I, <clears throat> uh, along with that, I didn't have that kind of backlash or, uh, you know, like the, those kind of um, uh, difficulties or challenges in showing my work. Yeah. 
uh, in my early career, uh, career as a reporter, I was given uh, an opportunity to be a press photographer because I was writing, reporting, and photographing at the same time. Um, but I did not choose. I did not choose to be a photograph, uh, a photojournalist because I knew my strength was not in press photography. Um, uh, however, I uh, when I write feature stories, I take photos by myself to go along with my story because uh, I know best how to shape the story that I'm writing. So During such a pandemic time, uh, many journalists in Myanmar they become vulnerable to the situation because they do not have enough protective suits and gears to cover the situation. Um, uh, this virus is a new, vi new virus, so we'll, we don't know how to cope with that yet. Uh, no one has experience uh, dealing with this kind of virus. Uh, for journalists, they have this pressure to cover the stories, and at the same time, they also need to cope with the situation thumbs up. Uh, for female journalists, uh, some of the female journalists, they have their own families to take care of uh, at, at their homes. Uh, so, they, they, so they have double pressures to that. Uh, fortunately, uh, I don't live with my family and I'm not married and I do not have child. So uh, I don't have to take this caretaker role. Uh, in this difficult time, but I can imagine how challenging it would be for other women who have this kind of double, double challenge in this crisis time. Because I, even I am struggling with the situation. Um, about the situation in general, for uh, during this crisis time, uh, Myanmar is one of the lowest uh, in, in the whole world when it comes to the quality of public public health. Uh, so we right now we have like very few uh, confirmed cases uh, but majority of the people we do not we 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 are not we're not sure if there are a lot of people out there who are infected but not get tested. Uh, so it's a very uh, risky situation, not only for normal people, but also for, for people like journalists, reporters, photographers as well. Um, I recently uh, visited uh, one of the biggest hospitals in town to interview medical workers uh, and to observe their operation. Uh, they they're not overwhelmed overwhelmed yet, but they are sort of preparing for the worst to come. Uh, for them it's like uh, they don't have even though they don't have enough resources to protect their patients, they are risking um, their own their own situations to do what they can. So yeah, this is the situation in your mind right now. Emerging female photographer is that, uh, you know, once we are in there at one stage, we simply do not need to, you know, be comfortable in it. We need to challenge ourselves. We need to reach out 
and uh, work even harder for that. It's uh, not not just for like um, opportunities, but also to uh, learn more and to be able to uh, push ourselves more forward. And also, it's good to reach out to other female photographers, which is very important. Um, it's then, you know, we learn from each other because we uh, mostly uh, like it think like, you know, it doesn't need to be a competitive uh, uh, society or community in that sense, you know, just try to work together and uh, because we are, have been already pushed behind in, in this um, photography scene so we need to be able to work together, share together and voice together to push ourselves forward, keep moving forward. Uh, when I started actually doing photography more than as a hobbyist, uh, I'm, I'm really thought, I thought that, you know, the photogenic, the photojournalistic type of photographies are really, the photographs are really cool and, you know, the land, the photojournalists go to like get a very good photograph, you know, the risks they take. Uh, and I really uh, envy those people. And, but uh, I gradually realized that, you know, my strength is not in photojournalism or I never, I don't think that I would ever be able to do that kind of photography. So maybe, you know, what you think you wanted and, you know, what you actually want internally might be different and you only discover it gradually as you do more, more practice or how should I say, uh, as you take more photos. My advice for emerging women photographers would be to truly understand what they want to say with their photographs and deliver it with honesty. Um, if, uh, if we are not honest with ourselves and, and how we work, uh, our photographs will reflect that dishonesty, the, the authenticity and honesty is the most important in delivering these kind of works. Photographers in Myanmar, including uh, myself, are uh, sometimes uh, uh, very difficult uh, to find uh, uh, what uh, they truly believe in and, and to follow uh, uh, their dreams uh, because of mainly the uh, 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 limited market opportunities and the financial uh, struggles they are facing in the industry. But uh, I will say uh, first, I try to explore what. Uh, you uh, truly believe in uh, and um, keep uh, insisting uh, on, on your dreams. I sharing to my colleague, uh, sharing to my fellow photographer from the region, we will have a, a lot of, uh, we will have challenges, of course, and then we will have a lot of limitation and we will have um, frustration inside, outside in this industry. Um, so, but uh, if we keep doing what we believe, if we are honest what we are doing, and those limitations makes us unique. That's that's my point. Knockout. You win.